Hey, I'm Spoonie Chad, and today we're going to be answering the question that absolutely no one asked. Can you turn an A-10 Warthog into an SSTO? And uh, we've removed all the weapons from this and the burr gun, sadly. Uh, but we add it back later, don't worry, it's just temporary. And uh, <laughs> basically, uh, take off the Weasley engines and add uh, two Rapiers and two Nerve engines. The Nerve engines will be for our space flight, and the Rapiers, of course, will get us to orbit. <laughs> So here she is taking off. Uh, it flew incredibly good, surprisingly. Uh, added a whole bunch of fuel clipped into each other into the nose to replace the weight of the GAU-8. And uh, yeah, flies incredibly good. Actually, almost better than the original one. <laughs> so uh, here we are getting to orbit, and it somehow actually gets to orbit, but only has about 748 meters per second, which is Fairly respectable for SSTO, and uh, it's just not going to be enough to get to the mun and back, which is uh, the main goal of this. Uh, so we add a whole bunch of extra fuel to it, do some aerobatics, and uh, then <laughs> then we uh, take it back up to orbit. This time we got 2,400 meters per second in orbit, which is really good. Really, really good. And so now we're going to uh, take it to the mun and try it out there. Um, I just get a simple encounter with the mun. I try to get efficiently but i wasted like a thousand meters per second when this is like a 600 700 meters per second maneuver uh, i'm not very efficient with my stuff <laughs> so anyway we're gonna land it at the mon arch i'm gonna try to get there by memory it's uh on the north end of that really big crater on the mon i also tried to get out like my engineer and remove some of the parts on the plane to see if i could get the the delta v down uh, up, I mean, and get the weight down, but it didn't really help, so I just ended up taking the rounded portions of the wing art, uh, off by accident. There is the uh, Mun Arch, though, and uh, we got pretty close to it, but as you'll see here in a second, uh, this landing didn't work out exactly how I'd planned. <laughs> uh, yeah, it came in way, way too hot, and I didn't quick save at all because I thought I was going to be all fancy and get there without even quick saving. So, uh, yeah, that didn't work out, but it gave us a chance to add the burr back to the A-10 and also added a few drop tanks to this, uh, which makes it kind of an SSTO int and, uh, oh yeah, hit the, uh, hit the light there. Oops. <laughs> Those runway lights are absolutely, uh, terrifying. But anyway, we added these drop tanks and they will drop part way to orbit, as you'll see here in a second. And, uh, I did that just to give us a little boost of, uh, Delta V, and like I said, it makes it a little bit of an SSTO int, and it's not really quite an SSTO, but I mean, you just see it get to orbit and the mun on one stage. This is just some extra Delta V for my, uh, for my tiny, tiny brain, because uh, I'm, I'm not capable of doing things efficiently. And so here we go, uh, landing it at the, uh, mun arch again, and we get a little bit farther away, I think, this time, uh, which kind of bites me in my butt later. <laughs> But uh, yeah, just getting it from memory. It's, the Mun Arch is on this big giant black crater on the on the Mun. I don't know where it's. I don't know where the Mun Arches are on KSP two, but this is where it is on KSP one. At least this one. I don't have the neat Mun Arch update. I use twelve point one point twelve point three. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just because I'm scared it'll break my save file. This thing is a carefully curated and pieced together mix of many different mods. <laughs> Not parts mods though. This is stock. So still stock, just very visually enhanced. <laughs> so yeah, we got pretty far away from the Mun Arch here, and uh, luckily this time we're coming in at a respectable like 60 meters per second, enough to slow down and kind of uh, kind of got overexcited and put the landing gear down, thinking I would actually land on them. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a tail landing. <laughs> now uh, you'll notice I do something here, and this comes into play later. Uh, I turn off the. Uh, back elevators there because they were just making me move around randomly on the surface and yeah that kind of bit me in my butt later because uh, <laughs> uh well you'll see a uh, bunch later in the video <laughs> but yeah we landed uh finally and uh put the brakes on got everything lined up and it wants to fall on its tail but you know that's okay <laughs> we'll forgive it and that is of course the great the honorable burger kerman piloting this so now we're going to do our little roving to the mon and this is like a good hour later it took forever and i'm like i'm just gonna fly right through the mon arch but uh yeah i kind of forgot that there's no atmosphere here oops <laughs> <laughs> i 
So uh, we take the boring approach and go down the uh, crater and uh, <laughs> slowly climb the mountain up to the mud arch. <laughs> this was uh, pretty brutal. I had to speed this up like 16 times or something. And it used a ton of Delta V. I think when we first landed, we probably had enough Delta V to actually get back to Kerbin. But after this stuff, yeah, not enough Delta V to get back to Kerbin. So here is the A-10 SSTO at the Mun Arch with Burger Kerman, everyone's favorite Kerbal. But he's stranded. So what do you do with a stranded Burger Kerman at the Mun Arch in an SSTO with only 130 meters per second Delta V? Well, obviously, you make a A-10 shuttle to go get him. This is a... <laughs> this is a VTOL... A-10 Warthog Space Shuttle <laughs> Because that is the only logical next step to this mission <laughs> This is you, this is a uh, Urpon, I think her name is, Kerbin? A Kerbal, I mean? Just saved her in uh, the Colony Saving and Restocking Series video, which will be out next This thing got to orbit surprisingly well Very surprisingly uh, Also mounted the A-10 a little bit offset on the uh, on the fuselage there, so it's a little bit crooked on the fuselage. Luckily, they didn't have much delta V, so we didn't have to fight with the uh, out of balance center of mass. And you may notice this shuttle A10 looks a bit wacky, and that's because, like I said, it is a VTOL a little bit, and it also has a bunch of extra fuel. There's like 4,000 meters per second of delta V once we got to orbit, and that is because it's going to do something very special to the uh, A10 <laughs> on the surface there. Uh, something very special indeed. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's an absolute abomination. It's an affront to God. This thing is the A10 space shuttle with a bunch of extra drop tanks and crap attached to it. Some of them are staged. Uh, you'll see here when we finally land. Almost pinpoint landing, by the way, at the Mun Arch. Pat myself on the back for that one. Getting better at those uh, pinpoint landings. But yeah, the VTOL doesn't work all that well. But like it all <laughs> like it it really doesn't like to work well uh so we just land on the tail just like the other a10 and uh yeah literally right here at the uh mud arch pretty nice pretty nice if you ask me um and so yeah we're just gonna climb the hill now <laughs> using our engines and uh yeah i still had the rapier zone so i need the extra thrust to land and uh we uh, go ahead and drop the little drop tanks under there uh, to get our just some weight savings. And also because there's a little grabbing claw, a little attachment at the bottom of this A-10 that is meant to attach to the other A-10 in a very interesting display of nature, in which you'll see here in a minute. But here's our two A-10s, our heavily modified alternate history A-10 there, and our regular much more normal, I guess, A-10 SSTO at the Mun Arch. These both have a uh, Burt Cannons. I don't know if I've fired them yet. The It got a little bit mixed up. But here you'll see the fascinating display of nature that is the VTOL Shuttle SS, uh, SSTO A-10. That's a big name. Attaching to our beautiful regular A-10. Damn, nature is beautiful, isn't it? So now we're going to take off our original A-10 with Burger Kerman in it. And I found this nice little cliff over there that uh, seemed to be a pretty good spot to uh, launch him from. Because uh, you kind of need like to get pretty vertical to launch this thing from the Mun's surface. This took quite a few tries. Quite a few tries. So we're just going to go up the cliff and then nail it to the floor and then <laughs> absolutely take this thing off. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to basically get into a regular orbit and then just head back to the curb. And pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. <laughs> Barely any Delta V to spare there. I think I got like five meters per second <laughs> after this. So we're going to use many, 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 many aero brakes and our Gal 8 Avenger to uh, retro break <laughs> into orbit. As you can see, we got about maybe like or five meters per second for each firing of that. So it wasn't much, but then again, that wasn't the full power of the Gal-8. Uh, it was kind of messed up because of the uh, action groups were a little bit rigged up on it. 
So uh, we're probably landing it in the worst possible spot ever. I'm going for that little opening, but uh, as fate would have it, we turned off our control surfaces on the elevators there. So I'm very confused about what's going on because I'm, I'm thinking that they're all on. And we almost, yeah, we do crash. <laughs> but so we try it again and uh, end up coming in for this really wavy, mountainous uh, place over here. And I also remember to turn the pe peach. I turned the peach back on. The pitch back on the elevators. <laughs> and uh, come in for a fairly okay landing. This thing flies beautifully empty. Um, I mean, it flies pretty good heavy too. Very nice though. Uh, yeah, this is really terrible terrain to land on, so we do bounce quite a bit, but, uh, <laughs> I think I had the brakes to, like, 200 on it, so, uh, that stopped us pretty quickly, as you'll see, and, uh, tipped us over a little bit, but Burger Kerman is back on Kerbin, so, uh, <laughs> here's the VTOL shuttle, the front to God, uh, A-10 Warthog, and, uh, yeah, I had some problems, I didn't put any of those to action groups, I made this thing in like five minutes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's going to take off. It's got a little bit more, well, a lot more Delta V than what we gave to the uh, other A-10. We basically split the fuel between the two A-10s whenever the uh, mating ritual there happened. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I came in really hot but somehow survived. But I made the mistake of having my super physics warp on. So when I went to put it on like 2X physics... I ended up putting it on like 10x physics and ripped it apart and we were just left with the little heart of the gal eight floating around there <laughs> so we had to relaunch it because once again i forgot to quick save uh, oops <laughs> um, but this time the VTOL launch worked a lot better i had a little bit of a better understanding of uh, what this thing wanted to do in its VTOL mode and uh we took it off kind of like vertical facing tail up and uh just launched it straight toward the retrograde of the Mon, basically uh, forcing it to uh, go into Kerbin's atmosphere as fast as possible. Basically a direct transfer, no orb, no uh, Mon orbit involved to Kerbin, just because we had a little more Delta V. And uh, I ended up getting over an ocean and having to fly for a really long time with no fuel glide, basically, uh, to try to get to the surface, because I really didn't want to do water landing in this. I mean, sure, I could survive it, but... I like I like landing on land. I've been practicing my landings, as you can tell. I haven't crashed nearly as much as I usually do. Um, but yeah, this one this one was a pretty floaty la landing. I don't know why this thing's heavier than the other A10. We came in at a similar speed, but yeah, it just keeps wanting to float, even at like 50 meters per second or so. It's just bouncing all over the place. So yeah, I had to give a bunch of control inputs on it to finally get this thing to come down. But there we are. If you like this video, then you will like my other two A-10 videos. Uh, check them out. And uh, check out my A-10, my other cargo's bird sticker that I made a while back. Uh, you can get that on t-shirts, hats, literally baby clothes. Uh, so go check that out if you like the A-10. And uh, I'm out of here.